Good morning, all of you. So, as you know, in last class, I taught you how the blood, blood groups are inherited from parents to the children. So, as we know that the, if you take commonly, if any kind of person, they, he might be having a chance of uh, getting any one of the blood group. That is what uh, we finalized yesterday. Either it may be having a A or you might be having B or you might be having AB or you might be having what guys? Or you might be having O blood group. So these are the four possibilities of blood groups which a person can have from parents to the offspring. So if any kind of progeny or offspring, he might be get maximum of the cases from the parents to the offspring. So in this uh, four blood groups. So as we know here, we are having this, uh, the gene which is related to the blood group always will represented with the capital I. And these gene will be existed in different forms. That is what we used to say, allies of this uh, blood group. So what is that allies of this one? Anybody can tell? Yes, please. So it will be having totally how many allies it is? Nobody? So what is the allies of this blood group? One is IA, second one is IB, and the third one is IO. So when IA and IB is coming from the parents, they will never show dominance over each other. So that is why they used to call it as, what we used to call it? This both are called as co-dominant. Same way if you take IARIO with I, uh, sorry, IARIB with IO, then definitely they will show the dominance over the IO. So that is why we will say IO is called as recessive one. Recessive. Understand? And IA and IB is who is to called as what? Dominant. So, we are having a six possibilities of uh, different uh, things, different combinations of this one. So, and we can get the different uh, blood group in these cases. So, if we take first one, so if we uh, let me consider IA and as well as IA. So, as we know, both are A, so that we will get the blood group of what guys? First, gene combination. So this is what the genotype. So if we'll get a genotype of IA and IA, then we'll get the blood group of what? All of you. A baby will obtain a blood group of A. A, person. a blood group of the person is A. And if we'll take another kind of genotype, that is what? IA over IO, then also a person will affect, a person will get the blood group of what guys? A group. Of A only. So that is the first thing. Next, next to the combinations, if a person is having IB and as well as IB, then a genotype, then what is the blood group? Open your mouth, what is the blood group? B will come. Yes or no? Or IB over IO, then a person will get what guys? B group. Because IO is the I O is what? All of you. I O is the what? Recessive one. So that is why we will get I B B group. B is only the blood group. Now, if a person is having a genotype of I A and I B or I B and I A, then a person will get the blood group of what? All of you. A B group. A B group. Understand? And last one, if a person is having a genotype of IO and IO, a person is having a blood group of, that is what genotype of IO and IO, then what will happen? All of you, IO and IO, both are recessive genes. So that what will happen? IO and IO, so that we'll get the blood group of what? 
more blood group. So like this, totally how many will get? Six different cases. So we have to remember based upon the genotype. So genotype will decide what kind of blood group a, a progeny or offspring is going to obtain from the parents. Yes or no? Please respond. That is what. Now same way here. Just I will wind up very fast. Nothing. So if you take here, just as the blood group is inherited by a child from its parent, is the same way the sex of a child is also inherited from the parents only. Means a sex of a child means in the sense of either a a boy child or a girl child. Sex means that is only boy or girl child, which is decided, which is also inherited. Understanding? So inherited from the parents only. Means from the mother and same way as well as from the father. Now, we'll describe how this inheritance of sex by a child from the parents. Now, if you take here, this inheritance of sex is only, we can say that, our concept known as sex determination, or we will say inheritance of uh, sex. Please note it on that. So, in exam, they will ask you inheritance of sex. That is also same. So, if you take here, all of you, before if you want to remember, uh, going to learn the determination of a sex of a child, we will use a letters to describe whole sex chromosome rather than individual chromosomes, individual chromosomes. So the sex chromosomes, if you take the sex chromosomes, if you take capital X and capital X, always will say uh, like uh, describe whole sex, that is what it is, X and X for a female. Okay, means a girl and X and Y for a male. That is what we will say boy. So this is what the sex chromosome in a girl and sex chromosome in a boy. That is what you have to remember. So now let us discuss how this uh, sex determination or inheritance of sex will take place. Now if we take a person can have a male sex or a female sex. So now, the process by which the sex of a person is determined, that is only who is to call as sex determination. They might be having a male sex or maybe having a female sex. So now here, the genetics is purely involved in the determination of a sex of a person. So it is not that because of uh, depends on parents, understanding of parents, no one having a control to decide either a girl child is going to born or a boy child is going to born. It is purely based upon the genetics. Now, here some other question may arise. So then what about the male, either male, neither male nor uh, female. So that is because of genetical changes. So that is what we will say. During the sexual reproduction, as we know that maximum variations will occur. So based upon the mother and as well as father conditions and as well as the, the uh, body growth or whatever it is inside the mother's body's conditions, based upon that, may some other uh, like uh, variations will take place in the DNA. So that is why it will leads to born a different uh, child, which we used to say basically a gay or uh, like we can say that they don't have it like suppose they looks like a boy, but they are having a feelings of a uh, girl child. So like that it is because of purely genetics. So genetic vari genetical variations takes place during the sexual reproduction then it will lead to a born like that, uh, some other category of uh, people. So it will be happen not only in uh, uh, humans, it will be happening even in animals also. So animals also that category of uh, uh, things will be, uh, like category of animals will be existed. So that is uh, quite common, it is not because of uh, somebody's. 
So even for them also, a birth is given by a pure male and pure female only. It is not that they, for them they only will give the birth. It is not possible. For them there is no kind of uh, uh, reproductive units also. They will never. They cannot uh, give the birth to reproductive uh, like uh, new generations. That is you have to remember. So now anyhow it is not our category. So that we will consider only a boy and a girl. So if you will take a girl, they will be having a chromosome of X and X and a boy if you will take having a chromosome of X and Y. So the chromosomes which determines the sex of a person is only called as sex chromosomes. So we are having a two kind of sex chromosomes. One is called X chromosome and another one is called as Y chromosome. So these are the chromosomes which will decide the gender or the sex of a given baby. Now if we we'll take here a male or we will take for example, if we we'll take a male, male means like a father or if we we'll take you can take any kind of man. So they are having, they has one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. Do you understand all of you? So male body is having what? One X chromosome and actually and one Y chromosome. So you might be here in domestic violence as it is, this is also very important. So we should study even in our book also it is mentioned. So in, in your Indian and all you can see domestic violence. So a mother cannot give the birth to a boy baby so that husband thrown the uh, mother like wife away from the home like that cases we can hear. Do you know one thing? So the purely the male or, male or female can be decided by only fathers because Mother, mother is always having the same type of uh, chromosomes. Only the father, uh, father male gametes only will decide either going to get a, a boy baby or a girl baby. But we, we people cannot understand that fact, so that uh, people will uh, always shows uh, like we can say you can our Indian uh, particularly our Indian cases, as it is mentioned in our book also, it is responsible. You can see father is the main responsible for the sex of the baby which is born either a boy or a girl but we will blame the women always it is even mentioned uh, in our uh, things also you can see that so if we take here a man is always having one one x chromosome and one y chromosome now if we take here means in the sense of, if we'll take a male gametes, so what is the name of the male gametes, everybody? Yes, please. So what is the name of the male gametes? We used to call it as sperms. So now in the sperms, half of the sperms will be having a X chromosome, remaining half of the sperms, they'll be having the Y chromosome. That is how to remember. So the sperms will have X chromosome and the remaining half will have Y chromosome. Now, if we we'll take the female, female means a mother. Okay. So, or we will say woman. So, whatever it is. So, woman or mother. So, they are having two X chromosomes. All of you remember that. No Y chromosome in a mother case. So, mother is having always only X chromosome. So that is why all the female gametes, they have only one chromosome. What is the chromosome present in all the, all the eggs, everybody? All the, all the gametes, female gametes. Means what is the female gametes name called as? All of you? Mm. Or we will say eggs. So they are having only, only one chromosome. What is that only one chromosome? Everybody, that is only X chromosome. So no Y chromosome is present in the mother's uh, mother's uh, X. That is what we can say female reproductive units or female sex cells. So now if you have been done this, that is what sex determination. So you can see how it will be happening. 
So the sex of a child depends on what happens at fertilization. So that is the main thing you have to remember. Sex of a child depends on what happens what happens at fertilization what do you mean by fertilization anyone please respond fastly i want to end up, end up. what do you mean by fertilization a male gamete fuses with a female gamete and it will form a zygote so the formation of zygote only we used to call it as what all of you we used to call it as fertilization Okay. Now, if we'll take how it will be see that how a uh, uh, sex of a baby has been decided. So, if we'll take the mother's X or mother's ova, if we'll notice it, so always they're having what, what chromosomes, guys? All are what? All chromosomes are what? X chromosomes. So, if you have taken, so let me consider. Mother is having a X chromosome of this egg. So now, let me consider the two eggs now. So they are having all the eggs is having what? All the eggs, hundred percent, they are having only one chromosome. What is the chromosome? Everybody, X chromosome. Now, if you take the fathers, so fathers sperms that is what a male gametes. So if you take, it is having what fifty fifty percentage. So fifty percent is what? X chromosome and remaining 50% what guys? Respond. Y chromosome. So if you have taken a male gametes, it may be having a sperm, may be having that is what 50% X and 50% Y. Now during fertilization, for example, mother is always religious the same X. If suppose the father's the sperm which is having a X chromosome will fuse us with that, then the baby will having a gamete. What is that? Anybody can tell. What is the zygote? X and X. So X and the X zygote will form. That is what we people say. So who will born? Male child, male or female? Who will born? Female. A female child will. That is what we will say, girl will born. Now, mother is will release only the X chromosome. If father's Y chromosome will combine, then we will get X and Y. That is what we will get XY zygote. That is only we will say, what is that? Male chain. So we will say, as it is a boy. So that is what is the sex chromosome how a gender or a sex of a person will be decided during the fertilization so always remember a male or female body is having 23 pairs of chromosomes 23 pairs of uh, chromosomes in that 22 pair is common in both male and female understanding both male and as well as female but only one one pair of chromosome is different what is that one pair is different everybody in female body will be having what x x chromosome in female understanding and in male what chromosome it is X, X and y. y chromosome. So that is the only set of chromosome which is different from ma male and as well as female. Remaining all, it is same only. So 23 plus 23 totally, how many chromosomes will get a baby? Yes, please. 46 chromosomes. Chromosome, 46 set of chromosomes you have to remember. So, if you remember a gender of a, a male, boy, a baby is purely depends on father only. So, father or man or husband is responsible for the sex of the baby which is born. So, but the belief is will think that mother is responsible for the sex of her baby is absolutely wrong which we are for in the indian practices so in many uh, ignorant indian families so they'll feel that mother is uh, held responsible for this birth of a girl child and there will be unnecessarily harassment and uh, domestic violence 
and this uh, sexual harassment by the husband, unusual languages and uh, like uh, harassment by uh, her in laws and uh, brother in laws or lot of whatever it is. So such people should understand that even NCRT you can notice they clearly mentioned at the last paragraph of this one so that uh, they should understand that only husband who is responsible for the birth of a girl child not moreover less or more a girl is not at all having a responsibility to get a girl child or a boy child so in some of even animals also sex determination is uh, even uh, controlled by environmental factors so that is uh, also very important they will ask you the question <laughs> so let us discuss that and we'll uh, wind up so if we'll take some animals so either in the sex determination either it is going to be a male or female determines by environmental factors so hope you all understand what is the sex determination now if you'll notice it here how are some animals environmental factors will influence their sex determination so let us discuss now if we'll take the reptiles what do you mean by reptiles anybody can give the examples of reptiles all of you raja gavan yes please so now if you'll notice basically reptiles reptiles the temperature is the main thing reptiles means like a snake guys snakes understanding all lizards or any kind of like that tail based uh, things so these reptiles the temperature at which mainly a temperature at which the fertilized egg is incubated before formation of baby yes uh, laksha so incubated before hatching so before hatching whatever the temperature it is uh, keeping that is what you can see in our home and all you might be notice villagers uh, eggs uh, chicken eggs and all you can see the hen will go and will sit on it 21 days uh, like and it will provide the warmth certain temperature to the uh, eggs then only the eggs will hatch in. have you noticed it or not yes please respond turtles and all you might notice yes, a small small tortoises, turtles and uh, even so many sea animals they will be put the eggs on the uh, seabed and they will cover with the sand and all later they will be getting the babies hatching so this temperature will play a, a very a big role uh, determining the sex of the offspring so if you'll notice mainly turtles so if you'll observe very carefully uh, turtle we can say that high incubation temperature if the incubation temperature is more incubation means that is what hatching incubation a temperature is high then notice it always leads to development of female offsprings or it will leads to female progeny please all of you remember so if the incubation temperature of these turtles is more then it will leads to female offsprings and if we'll take in the case of some lizards that is also reptiles only so uh, they here if high temperature high incubation temperature then it will leads to results in male offsprings so please all of you remember what is this it will happen male offsprings are male progeny see that in the case of turtle more high temperature female progeny but in the case of lizard even the lizard if you want the example also you can say agma agma is the name of the so that it will make it result like a male offsprings so that is why in some animals the environmental factors will decide either it is going to be a male or female even the turtle name we can say chrysima picta chrysima picta is the example of turtle okay so that is how to remember it so now in some animals you can take uh, you might be notice most probably snails so if you have taken these snails 
even individuals can change sex indicating you can take a sex is not at all determined by genetically in such animals they can change their sex whatever we want like even humans nowadays you can see transgenders they are modifying a boy can modify into girl girl can modify into boy purely depends on their it is not genetics genetic genetics is not deciding so such animals like snails they can in they can change their sex yeah, by according to the conditions and they will be indicating that sex is not determined genetically in such kind of animals so that is what you have to remember so this is what about what is uh, sex determination and all so till here let it be you study and uh, acquired uh, traits and inherited traits is also there which is having some connection with this chapter so now please uh, for this exam as we are having this in heredity so we have to read this entire chapter fully so we'll read it anyhow tomorrow also i'll take the revision so now let, let it be now you prepare for your exam so this is what till here he'll be having that uh, syllabus uh, for board exam hope you all understand now if you have anything doubt you can ask me or else you can leave from the meeting okay thank you everybody for uh, everyone please read seriously make it well in english exam thank you thank you sir prepare prepare